Welcome back to ShiftCast. You're watching a segment of the full episode. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it in the live tab of our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Uh, leave a rating while you're at it. Drop us, uh, drop us your rating on Spotify, but let's get right into it. Let's get into it, though. Open qualifier number four. This past weekend, um, North America and South America and Mina and SSA, I think. Um, that's one change that we got to applaud, Blast, and, and Epic, and Psionics oh, for sure. changing from last split to this one. Um, obviously, last split, every single region outside of Europe played on one weekend. Now we've reverted back to what we already had, which worked fine, and I don't know why we changed it, but here we are yet again. Um, they have balanced it out a little bit. Four regions one weekend, three week, uh, three regions the next weekend. Much better, a lot easier to consume and keep up with from a, um, a fan point of view. But we got I some mean, big It could still be better because now you have uh, Oceania and Asia Pacific, which are kind yep. of the same weird time zone for Europe and for North America right. uh, and South America. And we have those on the same weekend. So you could yeah. split that up, but it's fine. It's better than what it used to be. It's an That's improvement, right. I think. We're making some, we're making some improvements. Um, but we had some crazy, I, I guess, crazy outcomes here in the first um, qualifier of split number two. We saw it happen a few times in the last split. Uh, Moist missing, Resolve missing an event, Rebellion missing an event in NA. Um, so this is not the first time this has happened, but we got a big one here. Dignitas, after bringing Stizzy over from Europe, um, they were fifth in points, by the way, tied for fifth in points as we rolled into this second split. Now they have missed the qualifier. They dropped a series a little bit sooner than they would have liked to a, a team called Triple Threat, which is Kikarel, Tivaristo, and Talk. And that's a solid team as well, but Dig should be beating them. They should be moving yeah. into that upper round two. Um, and if they had done that, then they probably still would have made main event through lowers. Uh, but since they didn't, they ran into NRG in that qualification match. And NRG actually reverse swept them. So Dig missing out in a very uh, catastrophic way. If I'm not mistaken, they were reverse swept by triple threat as well. So two best of five reverse sweeps on the same day to miss qual number one here for split two. I tragic. mean, tragic, it, it, yeah, tragic, absolutely. And, and the way that this season is structured and the points and everything, it's extremely unlikely for them to make the major, which obviously means that they're almost certainly not going to make Worlds. And so, you know, we're seeing a lot of discussion on Twitter where, like, the season is effectively shot for Dig. I Tough mean, way yeah. to go, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've seen before that if a team drops down to a team that they shouldn't be losing against, like Triple Threat, then they can meet That's right. another team that should be making it in. Uh, and it happened again, now against NRG. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they got sat on by NRG. You know, sat on. By America's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that is Gerard <laughs> Gordon. That's funny. Yeah, Captain America stepped up big there. I, I was excited to see Aqua and the NRG team put together something. You know, obviously it's one thing in the qualifier where the level of competition across the board is just a, uh, just a hair lower. So I'm excited to see what they can put together in the main event, um, especially about the Swiss stage, where obviously we'll get to see them sized up against a few different opponents. Um, but for, for Dig, I mean, obviously there was some stuff published earlier today that it sounds as though Dig may be looking to bring Gyro in in place of Evo. I mean, it, it seems as though they're scrambling. What, what do you make of the situation for Dig? And, you know, I see the question here, does this potentially deter other new orgs looking at RLCS from entering? Um, go ahead, Belair. Do you want to take yes? Well, I, I was, uh, you know, prepping for this, doing some notes, and then, you know, right before we start recording, it's like, all right, well, I'll throw away all of my notes because they've completely changed. It seemed like it was like, all right, well, there was always a chance that NA is so deep and there's so many teams vying for those four spots there was always a reality where Dig might not make it to get to the major, but you still wanted to test the talent, kind of see what you got. Maybe it's a good start and you can kind of leapfrog into next season, or maybe you're just kind of looking at what you have as you head into the off season with some new talent, but they've completely thrown that out and jumped the gun. And now it seems like Evo might be moved to the bench. And, uh, you know, I guess they're rebuilding around Stizzy. You got some veterans around him to see how, you know, they can kind of, get things shook out. Um, but to your second point, Hootie, I, I, I don't think that other teams should be deterred from grabbing talent, especially if you're North America and the talent is coming over from Europe. Um, really, you can always find upgrades there, at least the way I see it. But Hold on, though. 
you started talking about death in NA. You cannot talk about death in NA when Rizzo has now an RLCS point. He's he's <laughs> tremendous. I don't know what you're talking about. I, mean, I don't that think that is a four time. That's a four time. The depth is so strong that the four time world champion has been pushed down to only one only RLCS one. point for a Yeah, season. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that that yeah. Okay, but 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 seriously though, it is of course it's a tragic situation to yep. not make the Swiss stage of of the first regional when you bring in someone from across the pond. Um, it doesn't really say anything about organizations bringing over talent from a different region because not every player is going to be the same. I mean, right. Stizzy is a decent player or has shown that he can make the playoffs three times, right? But that doesn't mean that he's going to be the best player in Europe. And they took a chance on him, but it wasn't guaranteed that you're going to have great results all of a sudden. And well, that's what you see. But I think it left a lot of people within the organization, or at least players, quite frustrated with the whole situation, with the roster change and then this result. And then, I mean, you can't just immediately do something about Stizzy and he wasn't playing the worst. So then you want to make a change, right? And any change, really. So it was you... going to be either Evo down, uh, I mean, or. Or Arsenal, I guess, but yeah, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense to me. It's it's quite unexpected to happen so quickly, maybe, but it does make sense if you look at the roster, I think. Yeah, what what do you make of the speed of the move yet? Because if you if you would have told me last night, hey, Dig didn't make it, they're going to make a change, I probably would have just said, well, I guess they're going to shift off of Arsenal just because they want to see if Evo and Stizzy are a cohesive duo but clearly that's not the way they went so what do you make of the the speed of the move is it just a symptom of the new formatting of the season or um how do you kind of take how they went about it mm. well i think the shift report went out really early um i don't think you know everything can always change we're at the moment of recording we don't know yet exactly what's going to happen because nothing hasn't been officially announced from the team side um, but what you quite often see behind the scenes is that the players are already talking about roster changes while they're still in a tournament, basically, right? Or mm. uh, very quickly afterwards, right? Um, for example, uh, with the um, uh, the roster move within Rule One, right? Yeah. Uh, with Ama dropping out, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then. It was already kind of in the works, or at least something was brewing while the players were still in Copenhagen. So th that shows you how quickly things can start moving, or at least start kind of getting loose, and then all all the parts start moving a little bit, uh, and then something like this can happen. So I don't think it's that weird that it happens that quickly after a result that nobody was was waiting. Or uh, was looking for. So it's, I don't think the speed is that weird. If you just look at the players on the roster, like I said, I think Evo on the bench kind of makes sense, but it is also kind of weird because they just rebuilt around Evo last split, right? Or before the season started. So yeah, they're, they're in a weird place right now. And, and with a couple of better results, I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, but it, yeah, it just makes a huge difference if you actually can score points within that first, uh, within the first open qualifier of the split. So, yeah, we'll see where where they go from here. But yeah, the, I don't the, think it's that weird that it's that it's an early change. Um, yeah, maybe not weird, but I do definitely think it's a, a almost like unintentionally encouraged by the structure and and system that we have yeah. at play right now. I mean, we see it yeah. from other teams as well. NRG at the beginning of the season even, um, absolutely scrambling, you know, two, three, four different uh, roster iterations in, in a very short amount of time. And I, I think it's just the uncertainty with, with the, the lack of top eight, right? Like you don't have a little extra yeah. security blanket to, to try things out. Like if, if Dig was, because they probably 
Well, I mean, they would have already been in the main event. So even if they flubbed out and went 0-3 in the main event, they would have accumulated some points, and they probably would have given it maybe one more event to see if things work. And, and maybe they don't. But my point is, what yeah. we currently have is very cutthroat. It's very volatile. Absolutely. And, um, you know, in, in a way, I, like I said earlier, I think it's unintentionally, so it's not maybe the idea behind it, but it's unintentionally kind of incentivizing these things. I mean, you look again, and this is not as high of a level, but young whippersnappers, they failed to make this main event. They've already made two in the first flip. And uh, one of their players, Skippy, leaves. And I had a big discussion about this on my stream. Actually, that's, I don't think that's true anymore. He deleted his uh, look, looking for a theme tweet. Well, let's just say for what I'm saying, um, he does. And, and either way, even <laughs> if it doesn't happen, um, he still thought it. And the reason that he thought it is because of what we're, what we're sitting in. Like, for that team, they're not making major, right? So sure. what do their points do for them? It does nothing. It gives them a little bit extra seating. And the way that they've made some uh, adjustments to seating is now the teams, it's kind of tied to an individual player. So like Skippy would be able to, to take his good seating with him wherever he landed. And so if you're not fighting for a major spot, if you're not fighting for a world spot, why not try something new? If you, if you feel like you, you and your team have kind of capped out and you, and you don't think you can elevate any further, um, why not try something new? And, and like I said, they're not as high level. So Dig is, you know, they, they do have more points, but with that miss, they're not getting, they're getting one point for this first event. And so Direct actually responded to a tweet because someone posted, I don't think Dig is totally doomed. And they went on to explain why. And then Direct came in and was like, well, actually, mathematically, they are pretty, they're pretty screwed. Like they're going to have to go two top twos. And even then, it's still not totally in their control. And so, is it like it's possible that they can regain their control of their, their of their own destiny, but it's extremely unlikely. So, you know, this format definitely, and I'm not saying it's bad. This is just a, a, a side effect of it where it's going to cause more volatility, especially in split two. Um, yeah. So with um, with that, we've got another team that uh, had a little bit of a stumble in the first split. Um, especially after the off season and you know a lot of discussion around this team, and then they pick up Justin and uh, you know added as a piece alongside um, Parthan two piece, and they obviously looked rough in in, in that um, second event where they just missed out. I think they lost to TSM to qualify, and then in the third event they did qualify, and if I'm not mistaken, they went 0 and three, even lo losing to um, Muffin Mint, which was you know a, a team that um, was really just, I mean they're obviously competitive, but all the players on that team knew that it wasn't going to last. They were just playing for one split, and Squishy was done. And so that's a rough loss, especially for a team that is, you know, doesn't have that mindset. They had the mindset of like, let's make majors, let's compete, try to be, yeah. uh, you know, an international kind of contender. And so, yeah. uh, a rough first split for Rebellion, but they seemed, at least in the qualifier, so you know, take it with a grain of salt. But they seemed to look a lot more comfortable. Um, a reverse sweep there against M80, which I think is a strong win and should indicate confidence for that team moving into the main event. It'll be interesting to see what they kind of make of this split because there were the, you know, rumors or the whispers um, that, you know, they might be looking to make a change during mm -hmm. the during the trade window. They end up running it back. Um, I, I think that it's going to be, I'm watching two-piece really carefully because it seemed like all of last season, he was kind of propped up as this kind of who could be the next upcoming star from the region. And we haven't really seen it yet. They really split the ball very evenly. Like if you look at their first split, uh, not the fall, major one split, um, Shopify Rebellion, all three of their players were either 60% goal participation and Justin was 59%. So I think it's important for somebody to kind of step up to the plate, whether that be two-piece becoming more of a creator and playmaker or Parth becoming more of a scorer. Um, I'm interested to see what the injection is going to be to kind of take them to that next level because I don't really know if we've seen a lot of cases where situations where you just have everybody kind of contributingly very contributing very evenly where that works out um in, in a positive way but who do you who do you look at as kind of the uh the the piece that could make or break shopify making the next event i feel like it's for me it's always parth i think when you when you see parth have like a if we're putting performances in like a tier list right when when parth has like an a tier performance an s tier performance from himself that's when i think rebellion is their best um, obviously, not uh, every player has uh, you know good days, bad days, mediocre days, et cetera. But I mm -hmm. think the floor for Justin and Two Piece is high enough where they will at least in North America consistently be competitive. 
Um, and Parth, I think his floor can be a little bit lower. There are some off days that I think just hurt that team. Um, and so even if you have Justin and two-piece operating at their floor and not in their A-tier, S-tier performance, I think as long as Parth is in that A and S-tier, um, I think they are okay. And then if you have all three of them performing at that A and S-tier level, I think they are a top four team in the region with you know potential to kind of go toe-to-toe and, and maybe not win, but go toe-to-toe with um, you know the two big dogs in, in North America. So I think there's a lot of talent on that team. And I think the biggest thing is just kind of a, the consistency issue, really, more than anything with that, with that squad. We've also got some exciting news in North America. Um, two big organizations uh, moving into the scene. One is just kind of a, a transfer. We'll talk about them here in a little bit. But Moist picked up Pirates on a Boat. That's a big one. And then we also had the ever-teased <laughs> Loud Nine. Back in the scene, they have been baiting for years at this point, and they pick up the omelet squad, Daniil, Percy, and Lion Blaze. What do you guys make of Cloud9 grabbing that squad specifically and at this moment um, in yeah. time? You know, we're halfway I mean, through a season. Um, that team did just come off of a big top four performance where they kind of threatened G2, and I think that's, you know, something to gain, uh, give that team confidence, give that or confidence in that team. So, Jens, I mean, what do you make of this uh, Cloud9 pickup here at this moment in the season and, and with this roster? I mean, it's not the best team ever sure. for an organization, the size and the scope of Cloud9. Um, I think that's clear, but at least, you know, it's an unsigned team in yeah. North America. There's not that many, right. and they clearly wanted to be in North America, so then that's absolutely fine. Um, and I, th I think it was actually the highest... Uh, ranked North American team that wasn't yeah, signed available. yet after right. that. Yeah, that was available after uh, Moist picked up Pirates on the Boat. Right? So, I mean, that's pretty decent. Um, but I think you might have to look at the bigger picture to truly understand this move. Mm -hmm. And that is what's coming up in August, probably. There's no dates announced, as far as I know. Uh, which I I'm referring to the Esports World Cup which is literally just a rebranded version of the Gamers 8 tournament. Uh, as far as we're aware, it's going to be the same kind of uh, ones, twos, and threes, uh, club battles or whatever it's called, team battles. Uh, yeah, crew formats. battles. Crew battles, yeah, that, that one. Um, where you have uh, a huge prize pool. Well, uh, for yeah. Rocket League, yeah, I guess. Yeah, back a bit. Um, but, you know, a prize pool and also an incentive for organizations to join as many of the different games as there are in Riyadh uh, with your organization. Right? So there, I think the organizations get like a $600,000 stipend just for participating in all the esports, right? Wow. So it makes sense that Cloud9, sure. who is one of the participants in the event, wants to have a Rocket League team. And as far as we have learned from some other leaks, there weren't any, Shift isn't involved, but there were some Twitter uh, screenshots going around uh, where there were no qualifiers for the Rocket League tournament involved. So that means it's going to be just invited teams, which means that a team, even though they're not the best team in the world, like Cloud9 currently in Rocket League, can join uh, the tournament there. So for Cloud9, it makes financially a lot of sense, and it's fun for North America and for Rocket League to have Cloud9 finally back after all the years of teasing, um, and after all the history they have made in the esports. So yeah, I mean, good, decent pickup. Yeah. Not a lot to say about it, but decent sure. pickup. Yeah. Well, l let me throw this over to Bel Air then. Well, let's talk about Moist and Pirates on a Boat. Um, you know, I think one wrinkle that is a little bit different there is... Um, Moist still had Coach Noah, and Pirates on a Boat had Coach Achieves, and obviously, unfortunately, one of them would have to be left out of the equation. And so, the way that Moist went about it is to hold on to who they had, and um, you know, honor their agreement with with Noah. And um, obviously, I'm sure there are some some other things that we'll maybe not hear about behind the scenes as far as their decision to do that. But what do you make of the Moist pickup and and, and the move to NA? Yeah, I mean, great pickup if you're Moist. Um... Coming over makes sense because their organization is located right. here. Um, and also, if you're going to hop in at a time where you want to get 
a team who has some talent and you kind of have some maneuverability going into the off season and even something to look forward to this season, really solid squad. Five up, I think is one of the, the, the better young players that we have who's coming up within North America. Um, and then you, you know, have a little flexibility with what you want to do. It does stink to see that uh, achieves is the one who is on the chopping block there. Um, but you know, it had to be somebody, I guess it makes sense for, um, cohesion or team culture or what have you to keep Noah. Um, maybe it's a more boring answer, like a contract situation, which sure. it probably is where you just move him over. Um, but really exciting to see even just the visual graphic that I saw on Twitter of the top 12 teams in North America, all yeah. having orgs it's like, all right, cool. You know, it's, 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 it's glad that we're getting news like this, where everybody is coming in, um, after a, a pretty tumultuous off season where things were a little rickety. So people still having buy-in um, is, is exciting to see, at least from, you know, from my perspective. It, it did hurt a little bit, though, to see EU get memed on because they have, what is it, eight out of the top 16 teams signed uh, compared to North America, which is doing quite well at the moment. It hurts a little bit, but yeah. uh, hopefully we'll get there. Yeah, I, I, I am curious as to what that is because at the moment Europe's actually got like far superior viewership and, and all I can really arrive at is that there's just more orgs that are established that are just housed in NA. I feel like it might be just be something as simple as that where like there's there's a small incentive for them to pick up an NA team because that's just where they are. Yeah, I think there's a limited number of orgs. There's only so many orgs to go around. Sure. Um and there's only so much money to go around and the sure. money pool in terms of sponsorships and things that orgs like to run their business uh, is just bigger in North America than in Europe. Yeah, okay. It just is. So if you are an organization, even if you're not based in North America, in North America, you'd rather pick up a North American team if you can afford it yeah. because the uh, salaries are a little bit higher too, but they're not that low in Europe. So if you can afford it, you know, pick up a North American team because it, makes more money for the organization yeah. and yeah. then there's i guess i don't know how much of a factor it is but there's the other thing of not just there's only so many orgs to go around but also there's only so many fans to go around and sure. organizations like to have a fan base and there are some huge fan bases in europe mm. uh, which yeah. are already taken up by the organizations in the sp in the, the scene right so mm. if you're joining uh an organization as an organization in Europe, are you going to have much to go on other than a good team? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and it, it also seems like there's there's a few things that you just rattled off, but it also seems like that the Europe is like very, very, very top heavy. You know, there's those four that I think were last split, very clear. Maybe there are two new teams that can compete with them. Um, but outside of those six, I think it's extremely unlikely that any of those other teams get international representation. So, um, you know, everything that you rattled off, I think, makes sense. Well, let's jump into, um, we got a Swiss spotlight. We're going to take a look at uh, some young stars facing off in round one. TSM, who has had a um, continual improvement throughout the season. Each of their result getting, um, actually, I don't know if chronologically it all got better, but they have certainly improved throughout their time with a recent top four. Um, and Snowman, who has been a little bit up and down, but has tons of talent on that roster. And I think with more experience, um, as they continue to gain experience through RLCS, that, that roster will continue to raise their ceiling and probably their floor, their floor as well. So let's just talk a little bit about that matchup. Belair, what are the things that stand out to you between those two teams? Uh, I, I think it's the duel between the two kind of big creators. Uh, Cream's had a great finish to... Uh, the major one qualifiers and then on the other side we have frosty who um is you know just lighting up the stat sheet i think tsm have been a team who over the course of this season they've kind of been uh gatekeeping is such a, a term we use for so many things but they've consistently beat teams that they should be beating on paper right. and then can't overcome the teams that are higher than them in the rankings uh, and i think that this is another version of that where um, i i would choose tsm uh, it's crazy that they're also a young team too i look at yeah. them and it's like oh wavy is still very young i almost forget that because he's been in so many events and i've seen him so much recently that it's like oh yeah he's still like very young as well 
but who do you who do you have? Who are you looking at? Who's under the lens for you, Hootie? Um, you know, I think for me, it's less about an individual player on either side, and I think it's a lot about the um, just execution of of the style because TSM is a very patient team. They are willing to sit on defense and and field some of that pressure, and they are extremely effective with their counterattack. Um, and I think up to a certain level of opponent, I think that is extremely, extremely effective. Um, we saw when they matched up um, in the top four with G2, it, it's just you're going to end up breaking down, right? Like that, that, those caliber of players, if you give them the space, if you sit back and, and absorb that pressure for long enough, eventually they're going to crack through that defense. Um, or did they play Gen G? I can't remember. It was one of those top two, but uh, the point remains for either of them that that level of talent will break down your defense if you can't be a little bit more aggressive and, and gain some um, some progression down the field, I guess. You know, start to win some midfield challenges, press a little bit yourself. You can't just have a quick stint and then back on defense. Uh, but Snowman, I think they are still young. They're obviously very mechanically talented, but I think they are a little bit more, uh, possibly a little bit more prone to the overextension, uh, the overaggression, you know, one too many passes or, or you know, one too many. Um, challenges forward or, or, or something just um, where they misstep, right? They, they, they miscommunicate, they go for a, an ambitious play, an ambitious shot, and they don't keep that, that back line solid. And I think TSM will take advantage of that. So I think it's going to be kind of a stylistic thing between these two squads. But I'm with you. I think TSM will probably end up taking the dub there. Yeah, it's going to be TSM for me as well. Uh, I'm just looking at that upper bracket round uh, matchup uh, with Snowman getting swept by OG. And TSM sweeping Cloud9. I mean, you could say that OG is, is a little bit higher cali caliber of a team, yeah. but it's still the, re the recent form that they come into these games with. And uh, if, if that's the showing they, they, they have, then I think they can do it again. Thank you for watching uh, ShiftCast. This was a segment of the full episode. If you want to catch the full episode, check it in the live tab of our YouTube channel, or you can check it out on Spotify. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.